Hey guys, it's X. Welcome back to my channel. Happy holidays to everybody. It is literally like a week away, actually less than a week away from Christmas time. But anyway, I just finished school about two weeks ago, so I'm really excited. So what this video is gonna be about is how I passed Advanced Pathophysiology with an A, you guys. I am so super excited um, that that class is finally over, but I really enjoyed Advanced Patho. So um, if anyone wonders, I am an MP school, so this is Advanced pathophysiology for nurse practitioner program. Um, I am an adult gerontology um, advanced practice nurse practitioner student. So I just wanted to kind of give you an insight on what I did to get an A in this class. Um, obviously there are other people who've made these videos, but everybody kind of has their own way of doing things and tips and tricks that people do for themselves. So I just kind of wanted to um, tell you what I did. Um, I'm gonna put out a disclaimer that I did work full time. However, I worked three 12 hour shifts. I don't have any kids and I really don't see my family or friends that often. So it's just the time that I spend with my boyfriend. Other than that, I don't have um, really much other things to give my time to. So the reason why I'm telling you that is because I want you to be able to determine whether these things are going to work for you. I do know that having kids is, you know, a job in itself. And if you're working for, or sorry, five, eight hour shifts, my tips and tricks are probably not going to work for you. Um, I did go to school with people who did work five, eights and sorry the other day I said eight fives and people were like where did that extra day come from so I want to make sure I get that right but anyway um I loved advanced pathophysiology I thought it was absolutely cool because now you get to learn about not only just physiology but like why we do treatments that we do in the hospital and it was just so exciting because I got to like learn about like the coagulation cascade like the immunity and like what happens and like it was just really cool to see like why we test for like PT for like an INR for like warfarin versus PTT for like heparin and stuff and it was just so cool to like see that stuff and other things like I had a patient with hepatic encephalopathy and it was literally like this person's case was like to a T of what I was learning in school and it was just so exciting to see and like know what treatments and what labs were ordered and like why they were ordered. So I really enjoyed the class, but it was definitely challenging, definitely hard. Um, but I'm gonna tell you what I did. So I had an 11 week course. My um, school is accelerated, they claim. Um, some classes are shorter than others. So this one just happened to be one of the 11 week courses, which kind of was hard to manage because the other classes that I've taken were like five weeks. And you know, you don't really get tired of schoolwork after five weeks, but after 11 weeks, I definitely was getting senioritis in my last, um, in my last few weeks of school there. But anyway, um, so the way my class was structured was we would get um, the lectures, videos, and chapters to read. The first thing that I can absolutely say is please, when you start class, go over your entire syllabus, go over the schedule. One thing that caused me to have major eye roll <laughs> was when I couldn't believe that people would ask like, what chapters are we reading for the test? What chapters are on the test? Like literally days before the test was even given. And I'm like, how do you not know this? Like, come on people. <laughs> like if this is so serious and we're paying so much money, how do you not pay attention to these things? Like, I don't know. Um, it's like, they say there's no such thing as a stupid question, but come on, pay attention, please. <laughs> like you absolutely have to know these things, especially if you want to pass a course this hard. So, uh, yeah, read your syllabus. <laughs> um, but anyway, I would listen to my lectures. I would download the lecture content um, that they would give us. 
I would listen to the lecture while reading the transcript, highlight anything that I felt was important or underline it, and then after that, I would read the corresponding chapters that they assigned us for um, the specific lecture, and then I would reread the lecture and make flashcards for what I felt was important. Literally, I'd have like a stack this big, I'm not lying, of flashcards, even for the part, like the t exam that I thought was gonna be the easiest. I like made flashcards that were like that much. And then I would literally read them all day long. Um, so for me, it would take like eight hours a day, four days a week for two weeks for my first exam. And I got, I believe a 92%, which I was really pissed off about, which everyone's like, whatever, you got an A, who cares? But to me, it's like, I should have got a higher A if I studied eight hours a day, four days a week, two weeks in a row. Like that's, ugh, I just, I am paying so much money that I like want to get an A. And I didn't want to be borderline, which was what happened to me. I was getting major senioritis and one of my exams was on pulmonary neurology and um, cardiovascular. And I was like, I do this every day. Like this is stuff that I see, all these conditions I know, like this should be an easy exam. I got an 82%. I was pissed. But why did I get an 82%? I didn't study as hard. I didn't make as like, many flashcards. I was just like thinking this was going to be a little vacation time for me to watch TV and do stuff because I, you know, knew all this stuff. No, whacked me in the face because I got an 82% on that exam and then it brought my score to like a 91.6 and I needed a 78% on my last exam in order to keep my A, which, sorry, 78, which isn't much. Like, a C is failing in NP school. You have to have a B average. So I was like, this isn't gonna happening, but it was so nerve wracking to me to put myself through that stress. Like there's no reason to stress for stuff like that. So for me, I made sure to get 100% on all my other assignments. So we had case studies, we had discussions. I made sure to make sure those were perfect, went over them many different times so that I could get 100% on those assignments. That way I just had to focus on studying for exams. Um, so yeah, I literally read my lectures over and over and over again. Um, I would, the reason why I printed them out and didn't keep them like on my iPad or anything was because I wanted to read them at work when I had downtime or on my, um, on my, uh, sorry, in on my lunch. And I just didn't find it very professional to, to be on an iPad while you're at work, at least if it's papers, it's like paperwork, you know, but I don't know. Um, I didn't want anyone to think like, oh, Christina's over there watching movies <laughs> or something. So um, I did print them out and they were easy for me to take places. I could study while I was in line for something or anywhere that we went, like I can have them with me to study if I didn't have time. Cause I always like, one thing about me is I have a guilty conscience. Like while I'm in school, if I'm not studying enough or if I'm doing something fun all day, I like feel bad, I regret it. I feel like I need to be at home. But one thing I definitely learned when I was in nursing school, after I graduated nursing school was like, I wish I would have taken care a little bit more better of myself and did more self care because I, gained, I did gain so much weight and like, from stressing and like not taking care of myself and feeling like I can't work out because I have to, you know, study and that's not very healthy. So this time I was like, I wanna make sure that, you know, I have a balanced life. So yeah, that's what I did. Um, another probably disclaimer that I should have mentioned is I am an ICU nurse. And a lot of these things I see on a daily basis. So it actually made these things a lot easier for me to comprehend, which I saw a lot of the primary, not nurses, but like a lot of the people who did work primary or outside did struggle a little bit. I felt more, I would see their questions that they had because they didn't see these things. Somebody asked me like, where do you get your normal lab values from? Like, how do you know what's normal? And I'm like, I just know them. Like, I don't, you know, I don't want to sound cocky or anything, but like, I, I know them. Like, I see them on a daily basis. I have to look at these every single day. So I already know what normal is and what abnormal isn't. And some of these tests we run. So 
I don't know, I definitely feel like I was in an advantage being an ICU nurse. Um, I also work PCU, so I felt like these were things normal chem panels and CBCs and stuff and ABGs that I like saw on a daily basis and know just from experience with it but like I said just because you experience something on a daily basis doesn't always mean that you're gonna do better because I got an 82% on the freaking thing that I knew the most like when we were doing cardio and pulmonary, and neuro like I know these things like the back of my hand. Well, I thought I did and then, you know, I took the test and was like, wow, <laughs> like I can't believe I scored that low on something that I felt, you know, I knew. But I got too confident, I got too cocky and that's what happened. So yeah, um, any other advice that I have for you guys, just read your syllabus, understand what's expected of you. My case studies, I, went over several times like I would read what it was go over the questions go every detail over the questions to make sure all the little questions were answered and then I would go to the rubric and make sure that whatever was in the rubric whether it was like something as simple as write two of this or make sure you list these items like I just made sure my rubrics and my um stuff made sense then we had discussions always pay attention to like how many references you have to use or stuff like that like you just don't want to, to lose stupid points over something that was there and other than that um read the lectures make flashcards for what you feel is important and what i mean by that is like if there's a disease process and they specifically mention something like most of the neuro things sound the same. Like myasthenia gravis, multiple sclerosis, Guillain-Barre, like they all kind of sound similar. But if you isolate whatever makes that particular thing stand out, I feel like that's something that you should definitely write a flashcard. And at first I was like, maybe it's not worth writing flashcards. Like there's just so many, when am I ever gonna read these? But after reading the lectures multiple times there were times that i would re review them and be like oh i missed that how could i miss this i've read this like many times so then when i would read my flashcards it wasn't to really learn more it was more like to test myself on how well i knew the material so that's what flashcards um are useful to me other than that i feel like they're kind of a waste of time if you're not really going to go over them but i did like to read the material to the point where i felt it was um um i like knew everything and then would test myself with the flashcards and then reading the book i only did it once because i felt like whatever they want us to learn from the lecture from the lectures derived from the book like it would be in the book which a couple of times i did notice there was questions that and every school is different obviously but a couple of times i did notice that there was things in the book that i read once but didn't reread again that were on the exam so i was like okay next time i will read the lecture with the book together so that way i would know um if that one little thing is not in the lecture, make sure to make a note of it. So yeah, that definitely helped me because I remember one of the um, questions in my last exam was like the Dawn phenomenon and the smoggy effect for diabetes and it wasn't in the lecture, but I knew when I read the book, I was like, this is something particular that I know for diabetes that should someone should know so i wrote it down and sure enough it was an exam question so i was like why didn't i think of this in the beginning of the semester but i felt like my school was pretty true to what was expected to be on the test so yeah it is a hard course it does require a lot of time don't think that i like skated by and just read lectures and read the book and that was it no i literally spent eight hours a day four days a week on my days off like for the whole 11 weeks didn't go out as much didn't um do that many fun things while i was in school it was literally study 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 but it all paid off because i got an a so yay <laughs> but anyway Good luck, you guys. If you have any questions, write them down below. I will um, 
try to answer them to the best of my ability. And if you're taking advanced pathophysiology soon, good luck to you. Bye.